Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. We're delighted to have your company tonight. The main talking points, Eric Zviachenko signs a four and a half year deal at Celtic. Rangers are closing in on Michael O'Halloran and Tumani Diagoraga. Uh, we'll also look at the weekend's football and of course talk about Stevie Naismith switching Everton and going to Norwich City. Just a few of those topics in the company of Alan Ruff and our boot room guest, the man who made two and scored two uh, for Dundee at the weekend, Gary Harkins. Delighted to have him on the programme. Uh, and I think the great news for us, Ruffy, is we have saved Gary uh, oh. from a huge embarrassment because the gear that he came in with <laughs> was, was an absolute nightmare and we've, we've coaxed him to change. Yeah, we've had, <laughs> we've had a few uh, trendy trendy tops on but uh, it just shows you when he takes it off he's decided he's seriously had a look at what it was and, it's just uh, warm in here yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thankfully um, we've got lots to talk about of course what a great weekend um, for yourself uh, for Dundee um, it was a good win away at Thistle uh, it was a tough place to go I think they've been flying the last few weeks so um, to go there and start the way we did was, was ideal and good to get the three points yep, and of course from your own <coughs> point of view Star man made two, scored two, and the and the second one was an absolute peach. That was an alright afternoon for me. I uh, uh, enjoyed it. Um, it's good to go on the score sheet as well as get the three points. Yeah, is there a feeling um, among you guys that you should be higher? I have always thought you, you should have been top six. Um, is there a feeling when you look at the season and some of the inconsistency that you should be higher than where you are now? Look, I think if you look at a lot of the games we've missed out here and there with the odd goal or two, and I think we've played. We could have played a lot better at times, so um, for us to be sitting where we are just now, it's probably a true reflection of, of how we've done, but hopefully we can kick on and, and finish higher up the league. I'll tell you what, Ruffy, on Saturday on the programme, we were looking at the goals flying in, we thought this could be this could be five or six the way Dundee came out of the traps. Yeah, it certainly was, and uh, he'll, he'll know how bad it is when he leaves uh, tonight when he sees that his tyres have been let down. Yeah, you're, not, you're not happy. <laughs> not happy at all, by the way. Yeah, it was a, an impressive performance from Dundee, but uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the other weekend matches uh, throughout the programme, but let's deal with some of the stories emerging today. Eric Zviachenko, um, it's a four and a half year deal, one and a half million signing from uh, Mitterland. So, does he go in at the expense of an FA Ambrose for you, Ruffy? Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Uh, I think it was a really good uh, partnership, uh, Van Dyke and Denia. Uh, they were really good right through the whole season and in Europe. And uh, since these two have left, it's been a bit suspect. Uh, they brought the new boy in, and I, I think FA Ambrose has probably had his had his time there. But uh, they might just still keep him, you know, to be part of the pool. Um, uh, he's not bad all the time, you know. He has decent games. He just very vulnerable when it comes to big games. Yeah, I, I love the way uh, Zviachenko was uh, portrayed in the newspapers this morning as, as if he was into arts and the culture and uh, as if footballers are not into that sort of thing. He's right into his fashion, which is maybe a chance for us to get him in tow with uh, Gaz <laughs> <laughs> before the programme ends. <laughs> but uh, uh, nevertheless, he's in there. Rangers are closing in uh, on Michael O'Halloran and uh, Tamani uh, Diagura. Um, I think, you know, the O'Halloran one, if they can get it over the line, he would be a good acquisition for them, Ruffy. Yeah, I think he would be. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see, uh, going to uh, obviously a bigger side, see if he could uh, step up a gear as well. He's certainly got bags of pace. And it was interesting that Murray Davison was given his tuppence worth about when he was supposed to be going to Rangers, how it affected him, you know, all the, the dragging on. And uh, and all players are different, but it can, you know, mess up your head when you know you've got a chance to go to a right big club and for whatever reason it doesn't go through and you have to come to terms with it and, and just bide where you are. But uh, reading between the lines, I'm being left out at the weekend. Obviously, Rangers have stated that they really do want them. The, the big thing is the price. You know, it'll be really interesting if Rangers go the whole hog and, and, and pay what St Johnson actually want for them. Yeah, and uh, just before I get Gary's thoughts on this, do you want to just obviously, you know, pay tribute to me telling you more than a few weeks ago, Ruffy? Yeah. Uh, Anthony Stokes, yeah. you just wouldn't listen no, to No, I him. wouldn't. I, I said at the time, uh, if, if, and it's a big if, he was trying to get <coughs> into the, Repu the Republic side, I think he would have to have went to a high-profile club, possibly down in England, score goals down there, get more limelight, get more 
uh, watched by obviously the Republic. But uh, if he goes to Hibs, you know, I'd be pleased with that. And uh, if he scored goals, even more so because uh, he certainly has got a, a quality striker. And uh, if they can get him back to scoring goals, there's only going to be one winner, and that's Hibs. Yep, and he could be part of a double signing for Hibs, Gary, because Kevin Thompson looks as if he might be getting a player coaching role. Um, when Kevin Thompson's fit, there's no doubt about his qualities. I know, he's a great player when he's fit and playing. Um, I think you can see from his time at Rangers and then obviously Middlesbrough and people that he was a, a top quality player. So if you can keep him fit, then you've got a good sign in your hand. Yeah, are you the permanent captain now? <coughs> um, I'm not sure. I think maybe until James is back, I'll maybe be... I need to get a bigger armband for me right enough. Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> it, also, it also means if you've got the armband, you're on the park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after being on your show, I'll probably be on the bench again next week. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say to you is because suddenly you have to bark instructions. There could be some guys that, I mean, uh, Nicky Lowe could end up doing more running for you because you obviously have to try and tell them where to run for you. Well, that's why I stand still. I can tell half people what to do. <laughs> um, as far as uh, the other results uh, at the weekend um, Aberdeen you've got to give them credit mm -hmm. Ruffy they're in the mix they got a good win Shea Logan for me I mean it's hard to believe he's a right back he plays right wings yeah. he got a great goal against Ross County yeah partic particularly the weekend he just seemed to pop up particularly for the second one I don't even know how he got there uh, but yes you know, it just shows you that uh, the Aberdeen boys dug in there it's a place when you get into 10 men Obviously, Jim McIntyre would have thought that maybe went on and won that one, but uh, terrific goals and a great performance, and it just keeps them hanging on to Celtic. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think we're all willing Aberdeen to, to make a go of it. Hearts as well in the mix, um, and maybe the expectation's too great on what they can actually deliver, but they're making a fist of it. Uh, it's a, a great result to go to Dingwall and, and get three points, especially after having gone down to ten men, so... Um, no, it's, it shows a bit of fight and a bit of character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a 3-2 win for them at Ross County. Um, you know, I was listening to Mark McGee after the game, Ruffy, at the weekend. Hearts absolutely hammered Motherwell. Everything they touched just seemed mm -hmm. to hit the back of the net. Uh, and there was a bit, little bit of skill. I mean, this man here is more than capable of it uh, on any given day. But the, the skill from Jim to win the penalty for Hearts was sublime. Yeah, it was a double bit of skill. You know, only did he sell the guy once, he sold the next guy as well. And and there was no, once it happened, actually, there was no way anybody else was taking that penalty but him. Yeah. You know, he's made it, so I'm having it. But let's not take any away for Hearts. I thought Hearts were magnificent. I thought they were all over the park. They were, they were great and uh, just shows you they could go on a big run now and, and really cause problems for Aberdeen and Celtic. Yeah, in a sense, Gary, the, the, the problem for Aberdeen and Hearts is what happens now at Celtic because they're already being linked uh, with a striker and if, if they, they've got Zviachenko and if they get another one then suddenly you're looking at them and they're thinking they've only lost Stokes, mm -hmm. suddenly they get stronger again. That's that's the big difference, the, the strength of their squad and the fact that they can add quality every transfer window is a big a big thing. Um, Aberdeen's squad is obviously um, a lot bigger and a lot better than it was and, and they're pushing but you, you can't compete with teams like Celtic Yeah and I don't think there's any um, signings on the horizon of Pataudry certainly if you listen mm. to the words of Derek McInnes Robbie No, no he said that you know he was more than happy with what he's got uh, which surprises me because uh, it's always good to get one player in at least even if it just freshes up the dressing room and, and it's a player that all the other guys know but it uh, remains to be seen there's uh, another fortnight to go yet Yeah uh, and you're still adamant that Dundee United uh, can escape the the, the drop, uh, Ruffy. Well, I'm Gaz has got a, just a I'm slight <laughs> smirk on his face because even he's looking and thinking oh, Ruffy's not the full shell. I'm hanging on to the basis that uh, they've got Kamarnock at the weekend, they've got a game in hand. They would obviously have to start winning these games, but I would think their objective would be get to the split and uh, play against the teams that are going to be down there. Obviously, they'll be under pressure as well. And we've saw it when the split comes. Some teams can pick up seven or eight points quite easily. Yeah, um, I've narrowed it down having looked at the games remaining, Gary. Dundee United need ten wins and it, it's a tall order. I mean, the one thing that I think from even from a Dundee perspective, you don't want to see, you know, the Derbys go, you love those sort <coughs> of things. Uh, no, they've got a big miss. Um, I don't think they'll they down yet. I think it was it five or six games they've been leading and then ended up not winning. So if they could start turning those games into wins then they could put a right fight on it and 
Yeah, the league's that tight now that as soon as they get a couple of wins, they could be right back on it. Yeah, um, if anything, the game Kilmarnock won at the weekend was a huge one, Ruffy. You mentioned them there, uh, and a good one to win it from Craig Slater. Yeah, yeah, then the. They're the, the inconsistent side, but I'm sure Gary Locke will be pleased, particularly at home, to get that win uh, because I've had a few hammers there and you could see the smile on his face after it and quite rightly so. Mm, OK, I can see the headline now. Harkin says Dundee United are not out of it yet. Um, he agrees with Ruffy in a shock in the first half of the show. Will he agree with him in the second half? We're going to talk Falkirk, Rangers and Hibs. Don't go away. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. And in case you were wondering at the start of the programme, what was all the fuss about? Gary Harkins looks fairly trendy in his white T-shirt. This is actually <laughs> this is actually Gary's <laughs> gear that he it's had just, on. Uh, Ruffy, I mean, you could be at the cutting edge if you were wearing yeah. Gary's gear. This is uh, actually the modern day style of football. This is uh, the new trendy gear that... Uh, this is it. It's not getting zipped up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, if you worked hard at it, um, that's magnificent, no. guys. I mean, it takes a lot of bottle. That's, there's a man at peace with himself to wear um, a, a, a tracksuit top like that. It's absolutely sensational. Not one that I'd be caught in myself. Let's concentrate on the football. Here's another thing that was annoying me. Um, they reckon Bobby Madden could be in trouble with the SFA because he was swearing at Lee Griffiths. Now... Come on, are you footballers that sensitive that you can't be sworn at? No, I'd swear at Lee Griffiths. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I didn't like that, Rocky. I mean, I honestly, yeah. I thought Bobby Madden had a good game. I, I just don't buy into it. I mean, yeah, it was interesting to hear uh, Kenny Clark's views, and uh, I think he he just said as it is. You know, it's a man's game. It's industrial language. I think it happened to Stuart Dougal. At, I think it was a party Thistle game against yeah. Rangers, and uh, I'm sure the majority of players would love a bit of well, banter. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, not, that, it's not. It's yeah. not as if it's an aggressive no. uh, way, but the, the unfortunate thing is the powers that be would obviously have a word with them because they'll see it as what, what, what's the point of us telling players to behave themselves and you aren't. But I hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah, same here. Um, are the referees in particular you can have a bit of banter with? Because a lot of people just make a blanket statement as if it's a thing of the past. But I still think there are referees who can... You can no, most of them. Most yeah. of them are. Um, the one we had Saturday was good. Um, you could talk to him and he was, he was fine. So that's, you need that as a player. It, it, it can calm down a lot of situations as well. Instead, I'm coming in saying not, nobody's speaking to me. If you can have a wee bit of banter with them and it gives you a wee bit back, then it's, it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, championship, Ruffy, was it an mm -hmm. opportunity lost? Falkirk or Hibbs uh, maybe trying to push the board out to get the win? Yeah, again, I only saw the highlights, but it certainly looked like uh, first half Falkirk, second half Hibbs. Uh, I, I do agree with Alan Stubbs. I thought it was a stonewall penalty. Uh, I don't know how the referee missed it. Uh, and these are the kind of things mm. that... Uh, win championships, you know, and that two points, you know, at the end of the season could be really, really cl crucial. So, no, I thought the two of them uh, gave a good shot of it. I thought both of them tried to win the game, which is a good thing. Yeah, and uh, more importantly, we Birdie never scored. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> which is... <laughs> yeah, I've got a bet on that Birdie will score 25 and he says he won't. When has he got? <clears throat> He's on 15. Still a bit of time, Gary. Let's hope he makes the playoffs, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they don't count. Or do they not count? Or is that a new rule? Uh, I also have a bet with him on um, uh, Martin Waghorn. Ruffy says he'll score 40. I say he won't score 40, although I'm really starting to get mm -hmm. twitchy feet about this one. I'd be worried about that one. Yeah, yeah he looks as if he, and he's taking penalties as well, and he's he's doing really well. Mm -hmm. On the point of John McGinn, I think Peter Houston has apologised uh, for the suggestion that he was diving inside the box. I mean, it was a stonewall penalty. Um, I thought Olsen's goal was touch of class, just no panic inside the box, side foots it into the back of the net. Yeah, and it, a wee dribble as well, you know, just to take it away for the defender. And uh, I, I think that's what what happens when you play in Astra Tough. I, I think. I don't know but if Gary would agree. I think you're, when you're playing all the time, you know what you can get away with. You know you can do a wee drawback. You know that it's going to be a clean. You know it's not going to bounce away for you. And uh, you're right, it was a it was a fantastic strike. Yeah, I don't think you'd be. A, are you a fan of Astro Tough? Wouldn't bother you. First touch is immaculate, son. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's it's quite good. The Astro, it's so on the body, especially when you get a wee bit older. But um, for footballing points of view, it's great. Yeah, um, Rangers. I mean, it was uh, mm -hmm. not that we expected. No disrespect. Uh, to David Hopkins Livingston side I don't think we 
uh, expected them to do anything at the weekend. But again, Waghorn, to his great credit, mm -hmm. was clinical in, in, in that ball trophy. Yeah, again, I will say that with Rangers at home, uh, free flowing, um, when they're attacking and they're scoring early, the confidence is up, the whole the whole grounds behind them and uh, just wants you to keep going. I think the disappointing thing would be obviously they never added to that in the second half, but uh, they put so much into the first half and I'm sure they won't be unhappy with the performance. Yeah, can you see anyone stopping them? Yeah, Falkirk and Hibs. Uh, I think the three of them are, are all on fire just now. Uh, the Falkirk game's coming up quite soon. Uh, that'll be another gauge uh, for Peter Houston. But uh, as it is just now, I think the three of them uh, in the dressing room, the confidence will be there for the three of them to think that they can beat either either one of them. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a really close run in to the league. Yeah, uh, all three of them battling away, Gary. We'd love to see all three of them in a an increased league. Is that something that you as a, an individual, as a, a player, would like to see a, a bigger league? I think I've said that from my early days at Partick Thistle, that you could do the, the much bigger league. I think there's, there's good players, there's good teams up here. And I think it'd be refreshing for everybody, fans, telly, um, players, to get it, to get it like up here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, let's look at some of the players just before I get to, a chance to chat to uh, Gary about Dundee's aspirations for the remainder of the season. A um, couple of players. <coughs> Stevie Naismith looks as if he's going to complete his move uh, to Norwich. I think that would be a really good buy for Alec Neil. Yeah, I think it will be. Uh, it's a shame for Stevie, you know, that uh, he was out at the Everton side for a wee while there. <laughs> then at the beginning of the season, uh, he was on the bench more than not, but then he had a wee run of five or six games. I think one of the games he scored two or three hat-tricks. You know, and uh, you thought, well, this will be the time to get an extended run. Unfortunately for him, they brought a couple of players in and he was surplus. So at his age, you want to play every week and I'm sure he'll score goals with Norwich. Yeah, and, and again, the talent that Everton have at their disposal, Ruffy, Aidan mm -hmm. McGeady, it just hasn't worked out for him there. No, it hasn't. I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that he goes out on loan. He'll, he'll be wanting to play games as well. He'll definitely be wanting to get into... Uh, the Ireland uh, side for the, the championship so he really needs to start playing regularly Yeah, <clears throat> we always talk about sometimes our game is heavily criticised I don't know if you're in control of the television control on a Sunday Gary but I watched the um, Man United Liverpool game and was absolutely bored out of my box with it and then you know, the next minute you watch Stoke Arsenal and it's 100 miles an hour and great to watch uh, I, I did watch Man U Liverpool and it was disappointing. I think Man U have been, been born to watch all year, so um, I can't see their fans being delighted with that. And then Stoke Arsenal was a, a much better game. Who can you see winning the title down there? Arsenal. <coughs> yeah. I think getting Peter Cech was the, the buy of the summer. I think he'll, he'll save them a lot of points and, and they'll, they'll go on to win it. We laughed at Joe Miller as well, Ruffy, but yeah, it looks did. as if it's it's coming back to haunt us. Yeah, all the other teams are, are failing miserably. There's no consistency whatsoever. I'm still going to hang in with Man City. I uh, yeah. still think they've got something to offer. Uh, you're really pushing the board out. Um, <laughs> listen, you, you have uh, you have a, a a great performance at the weekend. I thought <clears> it was fantastic <throat> that your new signing Darren uh comes out. You've you've set two up. <laughs> you've scored two, and he says you were murder at training. I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't make it up just when you were on a high. He caned you. Oh, no point in doing it during the week. I think you were saying say it on the Saturday. Uh, it's funny, actually, the uh -huh. amount of players that say train the way you play, but the big man's just saving the energy. Well, the, off goal, the, the, the second goal that he scored was when I saw it, I said, This is a training ground goal. You know, mm. you get bags of time, you know, you can look up and have a wee cut you know, casually. You know, just curl it, and that's what you do in training when you've got his ability. But uh, to do it on a Saturday was just wonderful. Yeah, w w how far can you guys go? Do you feel as if there's. I mean, it was a good, it could have been four, five, could have been six, um, the way you were playing at the weekend. This all rallied in the second half. What, what are the ambitions for this second half of the season for you guys? Uh, I think it's always to, to beat last year. I think we were sixth last year, and if we can finish sixth or above, I think that's a. A good season. Um, it's a tough league. It's really, really tight. I think we're three points off fourth or five points off second bottom. So um, we need to keep going and, and try to take three points every week and see if we can get right up there. Yeah, it, it strikes me as someone that uh, very rarely bursts into a complete guffaw, full of laughter. But as the manager, does the manager eventually say, "I'm really happy with that"? He looks as if he's always striving for something that wee bit extra. I'm not even after the weekend. I think. Um, he wasn't happy with the second goal that we lost and 
and fair enough. But I think he'd have been happy that we went there and got the three points considering they're on Thistle being on. What do you think, Rafi? Yeah, that's a disappointing one for Thistle, uh, uh, particularly at home as well. And they'll be wanting to get back on on track again. But as, as Gary's saying there, it's so close down the bottom. You know, you, you really need to get two or three wins under your belt to just take yourself away from the pressure at the bottom. And of course, it's uh, Celtic Hamilton tomorrow, Rafi. A chance for um, Ronnie Dyla to increase their advantage or, or restore their six-point advantage at least over Aberdeen. Yeah, on paper it looks as if it's a Celtic win, but uh, obviously Hamilton have went there before and managed to get something out of the game. So, I mean, Celtic will really have to go about their business, you know, and to, to keep it going, obviously, with Hearts and Aberdeen breathing down their necks. OK, it's been an absolute joy having uh, Gary Harkins on the programme. Don't forget, uh, you can win uh, Gary Harkins' talk because there's no way he's going to go away home with that, Ruffy. We may as well do a competition <laughs> for it, surely. Uh, I mean, it's absolute looks... <laughs> it looks ridiculous on you, so what's it going yeah. to look like on him? <laughs> anyway, on that note, uh, we've had the cutting edge of fashion on the show. Who needs Zviachenko when you've got Gary Harkins? Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>